Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. And yes, that is a tiger behind me. Because today, I am out a uh, wildlife rescue. I gotta do a repair on a uh, ATV. But at the end of this video, I'll have some footage if you want to see of some of these wild animals that were rescued. Timestamps will be in the description. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And let's get right into this repair. Okay guys, here it is. This is what we are working on today. The Arctic Cat four-wheel drive quad. Now the only problem with this is the carburetor is leaking gas. So on this particular 500 model, I'm going to show you how to remove the carburetor and clean it up. So stay tuned for that repair. And it should go pretty quick. If everything goes right. Okay guys. First things first, we're going to lift the trunk up. And remove the seat. And now our best angle of attack, I'm pretty sure, is going to be that side. But I like to always look. Okay, yep, both. Both clamps are on this side that you're on there. I'm not seeing too much in the way of resistance here. So what we're going to do is we're going to lower it down a little bit and we're going to get in there and remove this carburetor. Okay, we're going to start by removing the two clamps for the intake and the outtake. And it's just a Phillips bit, sometimes, I mean a flathead bit, sometimes they're Phillips, sometimes you have to actually get a hex nut in there. So all you gotta do is just turn them to loosen them, so we can remove that carburetor. Now unlike other ATVs where you gotta remove the throttle cable out of it, the throttle cable needle, I don't think on this one we'll have to do that. I normally don't work on Arctic Cats too much. <clears throat> but everybody's different. And everybody wants to make something new and revolutionary and then make it hard for the average person to repair. So they gotta call someone in. Okay, you don't have to remove those all the way, just loosen them enough. Where we can remove the intake for the air. And now we see the carburetor is discontinued, and now we can pull it off there. Now we're going to pull it down, and we're going to figure out, okay, so we are going to have to remove the fuel hose, which is a given. And inside this box here, I believe, is the either the choke or the throttle control, or we'll remove that too. So, we'll start by removing the fuel line. Go ahead and use your screwdriver, just pry it up. Now, take your flathead or your torque bit for this one and remove that. Be careful not to drop it because you don't want to misplace something this small here. Okay, that should just clip right out. Put that down with your bolt you took off. Now I gotta do is just pull this up and feed that around and out. Hopefully you were able to see what I did there. Let me zoom in. All I did was lift this up, take the wire there and pull it out. And now, I should be able to pull this out with ease. And it's leaking gas, because it was full of gas. And we got one more tube right here. And we can already see how bad this carburetor is. Let me zoom out. So for this one, the hose clamp wasn't even on there. I'm gonna need pliers. Let me get those real quick. <clears throat> the 
sometimes you got to make the determination like this hose is technically long enough i could add a um i could just cut it like that remove it later sometimes you don't have enough room to do that and we have an electrical control component right here let's see if that should just remove i think that's for the electric choke so and it looks like the key only has one phillips right there i'm gonna go actually to be honest i could just disconnect it right here and we could still get the carburetor out you know i normally don't get stuff this you know, technical but we get it out we get it clean we get it going so let's take this inside and dismantle it okay everybody now to rem now that we got the carburetor off to remove that electric choke all you got to do is just position it to where you've got access to that phillips bit and all you're going to need to dismantle this whole carburetor is just a phillips bit so once you got it ready all you got to do is just get it in there loosen that out put it aside and that key should come off the keeper and that should come out like that We'll spray that off, blow it off, and um, give it some oil. But we can't put the electrical into the cleaner. So now that we got that open, we're going to focus on the top here. Four Phillips. This will have a spring in here. This is for the throttle. Which sounds fine, but we'll still give it a cleaning. One. Two. Three and four you gotta be very careful with these atv and dirt bike and quad and all these other kinds of carburetors because these bolts are these nuts strip really easily so pull that off see the spring we can clean this part so we'll put that part aside we'll pull the spring out now this nice lightly pry this up I don't put this in the cleaner, but what I will do is I like to, um, oh, and I just dropped the pin out. Normally that don't come out like that. Okay, so. Hopefully nothing was broken in that. See how it's carbonated? I will clean that up by hand. And the needle just goes in like this. Sorry, there's a train coming. There's a train over here. And the spring will go in there like that. Okay. So from there, now what we'll do is we'll remove the one, two, three, four for the float bowl. Just checking something over here, okay. So one, two, three. Afraid that one's gonna strip out. That's why I like to use something with high torque just to hurry up and break it and that comes out like that yes it looks good the boot looks a little worn out we can replace that at a later date now from here we got three little phillips here one two and three. Remove that.
This is for fuel, the diaphragm. Remove that, we'll clean this piece. As you can see, it is dirty. So that will go in the cleaner. And you can see that's all dirty. So now what I'll do is I will take the pick and I'll remove the gaskets from this here in a second. But we're going to put it aside for now. And we're going to go to this. Now I just realized I lied. We're going to need a Phillips to remove the jets. I mean a flathead. So give me one second. I'll grab that. Flathead. Ready to go. Down pressure at the same time you're turning. So you don't break that brass. Then once you loosen it. Looks pretty good. That will go in the cleaner as well. Down pressure while you're turning it. Now from there, remove this jet and I'll take a peek at it. And it looks okay. So now that we're at this locate part, this thing, the whole thing, even the throttle part is just going to go right into the cleaner. So now all I need to do is remove the gaskets and the float bowl. I'm going to go ahead and do that off camera, slap it in the cleaner, and we're going to come back to it. Okay, let's take this out, blow it off, and put it back on and see if it worked. Sorry about the train again. Okay. Start with the main body. Looks a lot cleaner. A lot cleaner. Okay, we got that sprayed off. Let's get the bowl. Remove the gaskets. Make sure this goes up and down. See, like that. Pull it open. Okay. Got the top part and the little field cover. Just blow them all out, get all that water out. Turn off the cleaner, we no longer need it. Okay. So now we will put this gasket back on. Like so. Now I believe right here, that's where this other little gasket was. Which, if you're wondering the best way to remove these, just use a pick and lightly pick them up and then circle around with the pick to get gaskets out. Okay, now from there, we're going to put back on this little stopper here. And then from there, we're going to put the spring on there. 
and then find out where the gasket lines up right there and you're gonna press that spring down into there now what you're gonna do is you're gonna find your three the ones you did with three because you want to every time you take them off you want to separate them so we know that these go here so one two three you're gonna hand start them just a little bit just to make sure you're not cross threading them And then just give them a nice tight, don't over torque them. That's why I used a 12 volt and not like a 24 volt or 20 volt. You don't want to break nothing. Now to make sure that spring's working, it's returning up. See? Okay, from there, we will go to where the float bowl area is that we just sprayed out and cleaned. You're going to put back in your jets, which should have been cleaned out. These ones were okay, so they didn't need too much work. You're going to put them in there hand tight just until they're hand tight, and then you're going to go just a little past with your hand. You don't have to get the screwdriver and tighten these down all the way. There you go. Because <laughs> you risk damaging them. So from there, you're going to take your float bowl and your needle. You're going to put it back in. You're going to get your float bowl keeper. This one's perfectly round, so it doesn't have. It doesn't matter which way this one goes in. You're going to take a pick and just put your finger on the other side and get that perfectly flush. Like that. Okay, from there, we'll take our float bowl, make sure our gasket's on there. Make sure our gasket keeps plopping out. And just very carefully merge the two. And there we go. Now four bowls for the gasket, which you put in a separate area. One, two, three, and four. Zip those down. Just like that. Now we're going to come to the top here. We're going to put our needle back into the keeper there. We're going to drop that needle down to where it's going in there. We're going to put the spring on. All right, here, you know what? We'll put this in first. Just like that. Make sure it snugs up. Put the spring down. And now the top. Right there, there's three things. The spring's going to go around that. So line that up, like so. Then slowly work that spring down. And then before, hold it tight, like, like so, and test it. Make sure it goes up and down. See how it's not going up and down? My spring got jammed. So put that spring in there. This has to be the pain part. Okay, now see? Whoop. Okay, there we go. Now, last four bolts. Remember, just start them a little bit. Keep pressure on here. You don't want that spring to pop up and go flying everywhere. Zip them down. Test 
Test it now. And there we go. Oh wait, nope, we've got one more thing. Two. So blow off that all that dust. Put that choke back in until it snugs up. Little Phillips. And once you're in there, just snug it down. Then you can move that back to cover the Phillips. And there you go. Let's go put this back on the machine and take it for a test drive and see if it's continuing to leak gas. Okay, here we are back at the machine. We got our clean carburetor. Now remember, we've seen it like this with the throttle coming in. So this is how we're going to put it back in. Just reach it up in there. We're going to grab this fuel line here. Just going to put that back on. We're going to put it back on the intake there. And from there, we're going to take our throttle cable, get it open in there, like that. Let's see if we can't zoom in here. <clears throat> Move these out of the way for us. So all you got to do is wire this up like this. Put your finger behind there. Thread that in there like that. Oh, we didn't get it in all the way. Oh, there we go. Let it fall down. Sorry, the cart, the throttle cable is not working for me. Okay, and once we're in there, we're going to take our black piece right here. We're going to put it in the clip area. Clip it up in there like that. And you heard it clip. Hopefully you heard it. If not, that's fine. Let me zoom out. Take our little bolt and secure that. Start it with your fingers first. And then just finish it off with a screwdriver or a torque bit, whichever one you're using. Okay, we might as well hook back up our electric choke. Hook back up. Okay, from here now, I will put this other cord in that we removed, that we cut off short. Just because it has enough room. Now straighten out the carburetor. Squeeze back in this intake here. Now from here all we got to do is tighten those clamps. Let's start with the intake side first. You want to hold it with one finger because it's loose and it's roll it all around and from there just slowly tighten it sorry if I'm in the way Okay, now the intake one. Get it back over the carburetor.
like so, and give it a tighten. Now everything should be good to go for a test drive, so let me get there. Okay guys, let's fire her up and see what happens. On, and let's go. Thank you guys for watching this video on how to repair the Arctic Cat. Hope you guys have a good day. Thank you.